Hello and welcome to another section of this complete Angular course. We have already learned about all the basic and advanced concepts about Angular like components, directives, services, routing, HTTP client, pipes, etc. Now, one very important thing which we have not talked about in detail is modules. So in this section, we are going to learn about modules in detail and understand them in depth. So what is a module? Module in the end is a way of bundling the Angular building blocks together. Angular building blocks like components, directives, pipes, services, etc. So you need to include your components, directives, pipes, services, etc. in the Angular module so that Angular is aware about them. That's because Angular does not automatically scan all the files in your project. It does not search for all the codes you write and automatically detect all the components and services. Instead, you need to tell Angular what are the components, directives, services, etc. you are using in your Angular application by specifying them in the Angular module file. Now, one very important point to remember is that every Angular application must have at least one module. Now, with the latest version of Angular, that is not true. We can create Angular project with standalone components, which does not require a module. But we will talk about it later. But for now, just remember that if you are not creating an Angular project with standalone components, then in that case, your Angular project must have at least one main module. And in that main module, you must declare all the components, directives, pipes, services, etc., which you are going to use in your Angular application then only Angular will be aware about them and it will be able to find and render them when the Angular application runs. So let's try to understand all these concepts with our Angular project. Let's go to VS Code. So here I have this Angular modules project and here we have our all the files and folders for this project. And the main folder here is this source folder. If I expand this source folder, there we have this app folder and if I expand this app folder there we have all our components directives routes etc so in this app folder you will notice that we have one file called app module.ts file and this is our module file in this angular project currently we have two modules we have this app module and we have this route module so this app module is the main module file of this application now, why it is main module file? Because in the very beginning of this course, we learned that whenever an Angular application runs, first this main.ts file gets called. And in this main.ts file, you will notice that we are bootstrapping this app module. So, Angular will come to know about this app module. It will go to that app module and there it will check what are the components, directives we are declaring what are the imports we are making and what are the services we are providing. So Angular will come to know about all of them using this app module file because here only we have declared all our components, directives, services, pipes, etc. So for example, we have this dashboard component. We have declared this dashboard component here. That's why Angular will be aware about this dashboard component and wherever we will use the selector of this dashboard component, there Angular will render the content of dashboard component. If I comment this dashboard component here or if I remove it from here, now Angular will not know about this dashboard component because Angular is not going to look into the files and folders here. It is simply going to scan this app module file and whatever is declared there, Angular will be aware about only those things. It will be aware about only those components, pipes, directives, services, then other imports. Okay, so wherever we are using this dashboard component now, if I save the changes here, since the Angular is not aware about this dashboard component, if we go to our application, you see we have an error. And it says app create task is not an unknown element. That's because this app create task, it is a selector for create task component create task component is the child component for dashboard component and since angular does not know about the dashboard component it will not know about this create task component as well then we will have other 
errors as well related to the same thing. So the main point which you need to remember here is if we don't specify a component, a directive, a service or a pipe in the app module, Angular will not come to know about that component or that directive or that service or that pipe. So even if we try to use it in our Angular application, Angular will give us an error because Angular is not aware about those building blocks. So since it is not aware about those building blocks, it will think like we are trying to use something which is not available in our Angular project. Okay, so that's why whatever we create in our Angular application, we need to declare it in our module file. Then only Angular will come to know about it. Now, how do we create a module? Well, creating a module is very simple. You create a class, like here this app module, it is a class. And you need to decorate this class with this ng module decorator. Once you declare a class with ng module decorator, that class becomes a module. Same thing we are doing for the route module also. So again, if I open this app folder, and there if we go to route module.ts, you will see that here we have this route module class and we are decorating it with this ng module decorator. Now here in the main.ts file, we are bootstrapping app module. So whatever we want to use in our Angular application, we must declare it in our app module. And that's why you will see that here we have created this route module and we are exporting this route module in this app module at this line. Then only Angular will come to know about this route module. If I don't export it here, if I simply create this route module, but I don't export it here, Angular will not know about this route module and hence it will also not know about all these routes. And then in our app module file, we are also importing some of the built-in modules. For example, this browser module. So browser module gives us directives like ng if, ng for, ng class, ng style, etc. Then we are also importing this forms module. This form module gives us directive like ng form, ng module, and then it also gives us validators like email validator, required validator, etc. And all other things which is related to form. Then we are also using this HTTP client module, which is again a built-in module. We have not created these modules by ourselves. These modules are already available and we are simply importing it in our Angular application and using the directives which it provides. So this HTTP client module, it does not provide any directive, but it provides us some services. Okay. So any built-in module also, which we want to use in our Angular application, we first need to specify it inside this import array. Then only Angular will come to know that in our Angular application, we want to use these built-in modules, these core modules. So to summarize, Angular analyzes the ng module directive of a class to understand what building blocks we need in our Angular application. We use it to define which components, directives, services, pipes, etc. Angular should be aware of and are allowed to be used in your Angular application. Every Angular app requires at least one main module, which we bootstrap in the main.ts file. But we can also split our main module into smaller multiple modules. We also define the Angular core modules, the built-in modules, which we want to use in the imports array of the module file. And also, you cannot use certain building blocks like a component or a directive without including it in the module file. And another very important point which you need to remember and which I have not mentioned here is every module which we create in our Angular application, they works independently. They don't communicate with each other. Each module is a standalone module and there is no communication between two modules. So if you declare a component in a certain module, then that component can only be used in that module. And we will understand it practically in our next lecture. So I hope from this lecture, you have got a brief idea of what a module is, what is its use, and how do we make a class a module class, and how we can specify which components directives we want to use in our Angular application, which service we want to use in our Angular application, which external Angular modules we want to use in our Angular application, and so on. 
So this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.